Confirmation hearings for Katanji Brown Jackson, President Biden's choice to join the Supreme Court, begin tomorrow. Aaron Moriarty looks at the woman who could make history. My nominee for the United States Supreme Court is Judge Katanji Jackson. The name Judge Katanji Brown Jackson may be new to many Americans, but not these three women. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, what we saw so many years ago is really coming to pass right now in this moment. I can only hope that my life and career, my love of this country and the Constitution, will inspire future generations of Americans. Antoinette Coakley, a professor at Northeastern Law, Lisa Fairfax, a law professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and Nina Simmons, a corporate lawyer, met the federal court judge when they were all college freshmen at Harvard. It was very clear from the first time that we met her that Katanji was special. I remember telling her when we were in our dorm, you are going to be the first black woman on the U.S. Supreme Court. Back then, they called themselves the ladies, inseparable roommates during college. They went on to become classmates at Harvard Law. It was, we're going to make this together. We're going to help each other. And Katanji taught me that. When one wins, we all win. Jackson's writing and her analytical skills earned her a spot as an editor on the prestigious Harvard Law Review. But her friends say she stood out for more than just academics. She's hilarious, um, and that's something that people may not anticipate because they're so blinded by her intellectual brilliance that they don't realize she also has another side to her. She could dazzle with a story. And everyone will be laughing at the end of it. Or a song. She has an amazing voice. We've heard her sing, and we all know that if she had wanted to pursue that, she would have been brilliant in that space. But her true passion was always the law. She came to college knowing she wanted to be a lawyer. And not just a lawyer, right? She wanted to be a judge, yep. didn't she? Yes, she did. And I was like, oh, that totally makes sense by the way she talks, by the way she walks. She grew up in Miami, Florida, the oldest child of two educators. Her father is also a lawyer. They were there for her. They said, why not you? You belong here. You are the one. You worked hard. You're smart. You can do this. Jackson attended a predominantly white high school where she learned to think on her feet as a member of the debate team. She was one of the, if not the, shining star on the team. She was a standout in every way. Steven Rosenthal, who met her in seventh grade, was a member of that team and a close friend. You described her as the Simone Biles of oratory, which brings to mind agility. Yeah, Simone Biles has all these gold medals around her neck. That was the way Katanji was with debate trophies. She had more hardware, you know, than anybody else. But the quality that her friends mention most is her ability to listen and weigh all sides of an argument, a skill, they say, that will serve her well at confirmation hearings that begin tomorrow. Katanji is the ultimate preparer, <laughs> and she's going to be prepared. She, like all successful women of color, is used to facing questions about her credentials. Of course, she's had to have an armor. We all have. I think most people walking through this world do, but especially black women. Case in point, after Judge Jackson's name was announced. So is Contenji Brown Jackson. Tucker Carlson on his Fox News program ignored her nearly nine years on the federal bench and instead wondered about her scores on the LSAT. Let us know what Contenji Brown Jackson's LSAT score was. What did she do in the LSAT? The law school entrance exam. I actually laughed when I saw that because I said, is this the best that you can do? That man has clearly never met Katanji Brown Jackson. But the 51-year-old federal judge will likely be challenged about her past as a federal public defender and her work on the U.S. Sentencing Commission. If confirmed, she'll be the second working mom on the high court. She's married to surgeon Dr. Patrick Jackson and has two daughters. It's not just about the people who look like her who are getting inspiration from her. It's about all of us looking and realizing what it means for what's possible. A woman who stands just five feet, one inch tall, 
poised to knock down one more barrier. It's so historic because it's just another instance where we can say this is the America that we all want to be a part of. The dream is possible. The dream is possible.